How do you feel looking at yourself in the camera right it's now? Weird. <laughs> Let's go. Hey guys, before we get into it, I just want to take a moment and thank all of you who've supported the channel and this show for over a year now. And it's with all you guys' support that I've been able to keep making these videos and actually be able to make a living off of it. So if you enjoyed these videos, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I feel cringe every time I say that, but I think it's good for the algorithm. But if you guys want to support the channel financially, I also have a link to my Patreon in the description below. There you can get access to ad-free versions of the episodes, deleted scenes, fan questions, and some other things. Just to clarify, this is just extra content that I create for people that are willing and able to support the channel monetarily. But the main content will always be available for free online in its entirety and never behind a paywall because I love this content that I'm making and I genuinely want as many people as possible to see these episodes and get to know more about these guests and who knows maybe one day this little bedroom show will manage to land the final boss himself Ross Matthews but until then thank you all I am legitimately very appreciative of all the support for my channel whether it be financially through your viewership or sharing of memes about the show whatever it is thank you all and now on to the video Hi guys, and welcome back to Give It To Me Straight. I'm your host, Maddie Morphosis, and in the studio today is someone bringing a little male energy to the show, actually giving it to us straight, the one and only Lux Noir London. Hi. <laughs> That's so funny saying it, looking like this. I decided I'd pay tribute to your people, dressing like Thank you. a straight alpha male douchebag. Well, I was saying in the car, whenever you walked up, it was uh, so jarring, I wasn't sure it was you at first. It's the first drag queen that showed up without luggage. And I was just like, who is this person walking up to my car right now? The luggage is in my heart. The luggage is in your heart. The baggage is, the, you know, the baggage we carry. Of hyper-masculinity. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so for, for audio listeners, like, to the podcast version, let's describe what's happening here. Because they're probably so confused. Like, Lux Noir London, Male Energy, where is it at? So... <laughs> For those that might be familiar with the show, I normally try to dress up somewhat of an homage to the guests. And for the first time, someone has done the same for me. Lux, how would you describe your outfit for the people? Um, I'm wearing a pair of dirty Air Force Ones, baggy gray sweats, um, baggy boxers, mm -hmm. white tank top. I was going to call it something different, but that's a little problematic. Yeah. Um, well, you're allowed to be problematic today. Oh, okay. I'm wearing a wife beater. Yeah. Um, I'm wearing a fake gold chain square studs and mm -hmm. a yankee cap with my name on the side of it oh you actually get a custom made yeah i did oh wow okay yeah that's a, that's a, you know a little vanity in there so oh, I, it, I have to keep a little bit of myself and i'm wearing mm -hmm. perfume yeah to, to balance it out and to the end of lux's yang i'm wearing old spice with this look so <laughs> you know water finds its level it all oh, evens out <laughs> like water and oil i've had guests that come on here and they're like i'm going on the show i'm going to surprise maddie i'm going to really dress it out you know it had like Laganja wearing a huge outfit. We had Aja wearing dressing up instead of doing, you know, realness. And but I can honestly say, to your credit, this is the most surprised I've been by the appearance of a guest. <laughs> so that I've done my job. Yeah. <laughs> I've done my job. I can't take all the credit for the look though. I I was gonna wear something actually very similar to mm. what you're well, wearing. I dressed this way. I you know, I got like the captain's hat, like the leather, because I assumed you were gonna be wearing something very like latexy, you know, very very kink and very luxe. I was gonna wear a full latex cat suit with a pair of 10 inch pleaser boots mm -hmm. and a captain's hat. And my boy my friend was like, why don't you like dress like a straight guy? And I was like, that's so genius. Mm -hmm. Why did I think of that? So um, yeah. I decided to do it. It's camp. Thank you. <laughs> well, I am honored. Slightly offended, but mostly honored. You shouldn't so. be offended. Thank you. And that's me as a man telling you how to feel. You, you, are you sure you've never done this before? You're natural at it. I don't know, I kind of just like, you look so out of place manspreading right now. <laughs> you look I uncomfortable. Like, yeah, that looks more natural. You look more comfortable doing more, that. Like, when I first got here, I was sitting like this, and I was like, no, I have to, like... Mm -hmm. You look physically, like, you're physically pained to sit like that. Yeah, this is... I, I like, sit, like... This is, like, my stationary, like, neutral pose mm -hmm. when I'm sitting. Even out of drag, like, I just sit like this. So, like, sitting like this is, mm -hmm. like... That you like a pain in your hip. You're like, yeah, my like, legs aren't I meant to like do that. My body is like trying to like twist back into having it's my fighting legs it. crossed. No, <laughs> don't fight it. It's it's the Lord pushing you in the right direction. Don't yes. fight it. Let Him use you. I prayed today. <laughs> well, God bless you, and God bless the audience for joining us for whatever disaster piece this is going to be. Oh, and also, I feel like we also have to address a couple other elephants in the room. Number one, new sign. Got the new logo, so wait. Thank you for coming in and Another christening. In the room. 
No, that's my stress. I get them confused. Uh, and another elephant in the room is the fact that this is not your first time on the chair. Mm -mm. Because what a lot of you guys don't know is that uh, we actually filmed an interview with Lux. It was probably episode like 10 or something. It was right before Mistress. It was in May. Something like that. It was a long time ago. So you, if you guys watch the Mistress video, you'll notice that the audio is really messed up on Mistress's mic. The episode prior to that we filmed with Lux and the audio, the mics came undone completely. We filmed an entire interview and we lost the entire thing because it didn't save any of the audio. Right. So we're redoing it, but rest assured, the questions have been altered, shifted. Some questions still were makes. I think there's interesting conversations still be had, but the goofs, the gags have all been shifted around. So it is still going to be exciting and not pre-scripted. So. I also don't remember a thing that Maddie said or I said last year. Mm -hmm. So she could have asked these same exact questions and I would respond the way I did then. Yeah, that, that's the old luck back when she was gay. Yeah. Now, you know. I'm reformed. <laughs> reformed, I, like, I renewed. I the Super Bowl. Yeah. And, um... And I was like, go, go Chiefs? Or, or, or Niners, you know, whoever you're rooting for. But you, you watched uh, But I'm a Cheerleader, and you saw RuPaul, and it just, like, turned you. And, and then I was like, well, I want to, like, I want to hit that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to stop this. This is too much. Yeah, we're going to stop this before we get too far ahead. Okay, we're going <laughs> to jump into the interview now. Part two of the interview with Lux. <laughs> Say part two. The revamp? Part two, the Rumex. The Rumex, yeah. Lux interview to Electric Boogaloo. The Hills Have Eyes Part 2, the remix. Yeah. <laughs> Reloaded. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm still not over this. Okay. So, you're a lover of all things Drag Race. Um, what Was Drag Race what inspired you to get into drag? For some people, it's like watching like Tu Wong Fu or going to live shows. Was Drag Race like what got you interested in general with drag? Yeah. Drag Race is, I think, the first time I saw a drag queen. Mm -hmm. um, and then, well... Yes. I watched, like, the season three casting special. Like, season three, episode one. Like, mm -hmm. when it was airing. And I, like, told some of my cousins, I was like, oh my god, like, this show is, like, so cool. And they were like, no. And I was like, okay, work. And then I, like, repressed it. And then I was on YouTube, and a popular YouTuber at the time collaborated with Willem. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Willem was hilarious. So I did, like, a Willem deep dive. I watched everything that, like, Willem was, like, ever a part of. Mm -hmm. And then Drag Race came along, and I was like, oh, that's the show. So I watched season four, and then I, like, watched, like, everything else, mm -hmm. like, back and then, like, forward and back and forward and back and forward. I was going to say, it's very clear, like, from your knowledge of Drag Race that you have watched it many times, which we're going to talk about your knowledge of Drag Race, but just out of my curiosity... Like, how many times would you say you've seen each season? On average. I'm on, sure there's some you've seen m multiple times. On average, I've probably seen each season at least two times. Okay. So, pretty, you know, just a couple of rewatches. Is there a season you watch, like, five, ten times, like, season over five. and over? Season five? Season four. Season three, four, and five, mm. I've probably watched more than five times. Is that the sweet spot? What year was that? 20, season three, I think, was, like, 20, 2009. Like, 2009. I think season four was in, like, 2011. Mm -hmm. 2011, 2012-ish. Hmm. And then season five was 2012, 2013. And you graduated, like, 2018 or something like that? 2017, I graduated. 2017. So you were, like, in middle school, early high school, whenever like you really got into, like, drag race and stuff. Yeah. Damn. Pivotal time. Pivotal time. Pivotal? I just added a syllable. Pivotal? 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 Pivotal. It feels wrong. Pivotal. I have. I'm not good with like language. Well, something can Arkansas be public schools pivotable. Like you can. You can. Something. It can be pivoted. Yeah. Okay. But pivotal <laughs> is the word. Yeah. I my my grammar isn't always the best, and I know the biggest thing which the audience clocks me for all the time is like whenever I'm supposed to say when I say whenever, and I acknowledge that. I know that is a problem. Wait, what? Do it's you a, mean? it's a dialect thing. So I will say like instead of saying like when you were young, I say like whenever, whenever you, you were, were young. young Oh, it's a it's a it's a regional dialect thing because people in Arkansas they talk like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's not my fault. I think it's fine. Yeah, people Could... say things all the time mm -hmm. that aren't right. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> With your drag character, I feel like your most defining trait is your confidence. Where did your confidence stem from? Is it something you found in drag, or have you always been like a very confident person growing up? I wasn't always very confident, but then my I was like getting kind of like teased and like elementary school and stuff mm -hmm. so my parents were always like oh like don't listen to them like they're jealous of you because like you're like smart and like you like get whatever you want and like you're like so amazing and like everybody likes you or whatever um so mm -hmm. i was like okay work and then so they instilled that delusion at a very young age yes okay they're the reason for 
all of this, so blame them, not me. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then Lady Gaga came along mm-hmm. in, like, middle school, and I was like, oh, my God, like, this is, this is what I need to hear right now. And this is what I want to see. This is what I want to see. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's like, that's kind of where it all stems from. Lady Gaga and my parents. Mm-hmm. Were you, it was like around that time, like Lady Gaga middle school that you started to realize like your sexuality or was it kind of later, like through high school and leaving high school? I knew I was gay very early on. Were you expressing it openly? No. Okay. But I, you weren't like this in middle school yet. No, I, this comes after like watching the Super Bowl. Oh, but, okay. Um, this, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't spend too much of the interview talking about this outfit, but you did tell me, you're like, oh, I ordered a hat, but it didn't come in, so I have to go get dropped off at the hotel and go around to get, I had to get a hat made. And I was so confused. I was like, Where, what kind of hat? She's in Vegas. And she's about to have like some big feather piece or something. <laughs> and you show up and like, no, you just had to embroider a I Yankee hat. I just had hat. to get a Yankee hat. Yeah. Like, I feel like a Yankee hat is so like straight guy. I didn't mm-hmm. want to do a snapback. I had to do like a fitted cap because that's just like yeah. what you do. But I still want a wig. My culture is not a costume, Lux. It is today. My <laughs> culture is not a costume. It's not. You're appropriating, you're appropriating vinyl and and cop hats. A cab. A cab. Oh my gosh, not that. <laughs> Just twelve for the record. So, so make sure we're all on the same page here. <laughs> but the area you grew up in, like, is it was it a very like welcoming place for someone that was like openly gay? Because I know East Orange, like the area of New Jersey you're from, is like double the crime rate of like the whole state. And like, what like what kind of place was that for you growing up? Um, well, I lived in the, like, I guess you could say, like, the more suburban area of East Orange. Like, you, you had money. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up, like, pretty privileged. Mm. Um, I grew up in, like, the nicer part of East Orange. Mm. Um, but no, East Orange is not... I still, like, went to school in, like, not the nice part of East Orange. So, yep. like, growing up, like, it was very, like, this is wrong. Like, everybody, like, said, like, gay is a joke. And, like... Oh, like, they're like, oh, you like boys or whatever. Like, to other people, it's like a joke. And I was like, wait, I kind of think that, like, boys are kind of cute. Like, I never had, like, crushes on, like... I would watch Hannah Montana because, like, I had a crush on, like, Hannah Montana's, like, boyfriend. Not Hannah Montana. I mean, that was where you were going to say, like, her brother. I was like, no. Voices. No, no, no. Not Jackson. (laughs) Not Jackson. So... You still had, you still had standards. Yeah, I yeah. still had, I had standards and I had taste. Mm-hmm. As I, it just roll over points, you know. Like from a young age, I, I've been, mm-hmm. I've been that girl. Yeah, but like your high school and stuff, like because then you've always been very confident. So like, is that how you approach like bullying, or are you very just kind of like kept to yourself? Like, like is the person like you are today? Is it reminiscent of who you were back then, or have, did you go through like a one eighty after leaving school? Um, yes and no. Okay. I feel like I was very. I was flamboyant in a different way. I was flit like now someone would see me and be like, "Oh my god, you are like a," f-. but it's like in high school it was kind of just like, "Oh, he's a little, he's a little weird." But it's like I kind of just amped it up once I left high school because I didn't have to like be surrounded by all these people. But honestly, I didn't come out in high school because I didn't want it to be like the thing. I would have been like the only other like out person in my high school I think Mm -hmm. so I didn't want it to be like oh my god like the gay kid it also like it was nobody's business I feel because then people are like oh like like sexual things and like you know like it's confirmed now so they're like really like excluding and like staying away Mm -hmm. you know I feel like in high school my bullying wasn't like bullying I was just being purposefully excluded from things mm, okay you, you aren't being like shoved in lockers and stuff no. okay but with, with your town though like east orange new jersey like you did make a splash for yourself after the fact because like you're listed in that city of like notable like not notable alumni notable people in the city with names such as queen latifah whitney houston and lauren hill that's insane yeah i don't have a read for that it's just like crazy to think about yeah it's wild and like the city of east orange like never even acknowledged it what do you mean like, there was, like, no, like, mention of, like, me being on Drag Race by the city oh. or anything. Well, to be fair, I mean, they had Whitney Houston and Lauren Hill, so that, you know. Okay. Shows up late, dead. Wow. I mean, Damn. shows up late, dead. <laughs> but also, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, there has been people from, like, my high school have had success that, like, have, like, a key to the city. And it's like, oh. they are like not even from East Orange. Like I was like born and raised in mm-hmm. East Orange, like went to school, like they transferred in like junior year. And since they were on like 
a, a television show, like, mm-hmm. like a supporting character or whatever, it's like they have like a key to the city and they're like the crown mm-hmm. jewel of like East Orange. And it's like, I've like went to school here my entire life and I didn't even get like a mention like on a Facebook page or like in the paper. Like my high school didn't even acknowledge it. And I feel like it's weird because I was such like a like a staple in a lot of things that happened in my high school. Yeah. And I felt like for them to not even acknowledge the fact that I had I'm on like an Emmy award winning like television show. Yeah. Like there was no acknowledgement of that. I thought that was pretty shitty of them. Yeah, because well, on top of being listed like notable people of the city, you are listed as a notable alumni of the school. So like people in Wikipedia have acknowledged you, but the school itself hasn't. Mm-hmm. Is that something you also chalk to like just like discrimination, uh, massage noir, as you've referred to it before? Yeah, it's definitely. I think it's definitely like homophobic and just like queer phobic. It's very interesting in like an art school where so many of art is based in queerness Mm -hmm. that they kind of just leave the queerness out of the conversation. Yeah. It's like, it's very strange and it's very weird Mm -hmm. because there have been people who have been greatly acknowledged for doing a lot less. Like there was a girl in my high school, no shade to her, but she probably won't see this, but there was a girl in my high school who kind of like went viral because she like designed her own prom dress. And like... It was like the duct tape one or something? No, it was like made of like fabric, but like she didn't even sew it. Like she just sketched it. And she, like, went viral because it was, like, so gorgeous. And, like, she got all of this, like, press from the school. And, like, she's always, like, revered. And she's, like, being invited to speak. And, like, all of this stuff. And it's, like, I don't even get a mention of the fact that, like, I am probably one of the five people to come out of my school. Probably Mm -hmm. one of the three people out of my graduating class to actually do something of notoriety. And it's not even like mentioned. It's kind of like fucked Mm -hmm. up, I think. It is. I I didn't realize that being like excluded from like your, you know, your school's page and stuff like meant so much to you. Like I'm, I'm someone that like, I don't even refer to like the school I actually went to because, you know, I don't fuck with them. I don't care about it. But with you, obviously like this growing up in the city, in this town, this school, had a lot more of an effect on you. It was just like, it, I, it just was puzzling because it's like, there are like, like Anitra has like a key to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. It's like, there are so many, like, and this is going to sound like I'm like trying she to- She didn't knock, even win. This, she didn't, it's going to sound like I'm knocking her down, mm-hmm. but I'm fully not. There are so many other notable people from Las Vegas that I would think have a key to the city, but she has it, which I, that's like amazing. But for me, like Las Vegas is a huge city. Mm. We're talking like East Orange, New Jersey, population of probably like 100,000 people. It's like, or less. It's like, I can't even get like a write up in the newspaper that I was on Drag Race. Mm-hmm. Like that's like kind of like, it's just shitty to like all of the queer kids who like probably live there, who are like in the closet, who know I'm from East Orange, but East Orange is not recognizing the fact that there are, that queerness is coming from this place. Yeah, I just think it's like not even for me. It's for everybody else. I, I can say from an outside point of view, as someone that does like extensive research, like on the guests, like there was like a lack of like local interview and news and stuff. Like almost everyone I read about their hometown does have like a news page or their school has like a newsletter or something like that. But yeah, now that you mention it, there was like a a big gap. It's literally just like no mention of you at any point, yeah. and then all of a sudden there's like an Entertainment Weekly article, and that's it. I have one. I have one write up in the Asbury Park Press. I don't live in Asbury Park, and I had one write-up in NewJersey.com. That's it. And there are several other outlets in East Orange that I could have been acknowledged in, and nothing. Not even a fucking post on the school's Instagram page that I was on Drag Race. It's so weird. Okay, so it's not not just my detective skills then. Because, again, I'm looking this up, and I'm like, I can't find shit. No, it does not exist. (laughs) Okay. You were purposely excluded from all this stuff, Mm -hmm. so... Damn, that's rough, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> bro. We say bro, not buddy. I'm not a. I'm not a kid. Okay. Oh, sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to. I'm sorry. It just. We good. <laughs> that was gross. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I hated that. <laughs> I need to. I need to get out of this. <laughs> I, I feel like yeah, I'm that, about to that, like that, Natalie that, Portman in the Black Swan. Like I'm gonna like leave this and I'm gonna be like I need a beer like stat and I'm gonna look in the mirror and I'm gonna have like a beard and like like scruff and yeah. like I'm gonna be like what's going on you're, you're walking a mile in my shoes right now because like what you just experienced what I experience all the time I've been doing drag for like six seven years now 
I can't remember the last time I interacted with straight people in the wild outside of like a drag function. Mm -hmm. And so just people coming up to me and ironically being like, oh, sup, bro, all the time. It's just like, this, it, it feels weird, yeah. you know. But this isn't, this isn't great. <laughs> but I digress. But it seems like a lot of uh, confident people, especially people of color, are considered like arrogant and narcissistic by people. And while I don't condone that rhetoric, it did spawn one of the most iconic rants I've ever heard when someone on Twitter, in a Twitter space, referred to you as a narcissist, in which you said... Yeah, I am a narcissist. I am a narcissist. Thank you for realizing that. And me being a narcissist has me with the platform for you to come on my page and talk shit about me. I don't know who you are, yeah. sweetie, and nobody else does. Please go fade into obscurity by using somebody else's profile for yours. I show my face. People know who I am. I don't know the woman or the man or the person behind your profile. And I don't think I ever will because you don't have the courage, the gall, or the balls to show us yourself and reveal yourself. And you never will. So keep typing behind the keyboard and I'll keep collecting checks. And if you want to say something to me, you can check my tour dates and you can come by and meet and greet pass. But until then, you will not get another piece of attention from me. Have a good night. Be blessed. And watch me next week and the week after that on Drag Race. But with that spiel, how did it feel committing your first murder? <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't like go to jail for it. Honestly. I kind of like get out of, I got like a get out of jail free card, I guess. <laughs> because like everybody like loved it. And then it had like a weird resurgence like a couple months ago. And people were like, oh my God, remember this? And I'm like, oh brother, here we go. But I don't know who that person is. Um, there's speculation on the internet as to who that person may be. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't really... I wouldn't know the person to like even confirm the speculation. Yeah, because they're afraid to show their face. You'll probably never know who they are, who the man, the woman, or the whoever, person. or the person <laughs> behind that profile is. Real. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. But what, what impressed me most about that, one, is like the off-the-cuff nature of it. Like everything you said was like just so perfect. It lined up. It, there was never any pauses, stops, and with, with with the way you speak too, there's a you don't use a whole lot of word fillers. I feel like like is less of like a word filler and more of like a generational thing. Like we just put like in a lot yeah, of places. Yeah, that's literally just like what it is. But you don't use like filler words like um and uh, you know. Oh yeah, no, I'm no, I just say what like my brain is just like processing it like as mm -hmm. coming out. So I'm just saying what I'm thinking. Yeah. And I'm never like I say like because that's just like what it is. You yeah. Know? But you, you didn't I, I take don't, like. You didn't take like public speaking or anything like that. In your, I mean, I your short an, stint. I was an actor. Oh, an actor. I mean, not an actor. I did like I went to school for like musical theater, mm. so like I know how to like public speak. Yeah. Or like I just like know how to public speak, I guess. Which is like when I did the whole thing, like not when I did the whole thing, but like when the whole thing on Drag Race happened, when I like said who should go home and why, everybody was like, "Oh, that had to be pre-planned. There's no way that she could have just come up with that on the cusp." And I'm like, "No, like." I know how to form, like, a coherent sentence. Like, well, to be fair, like, almost everyone knows how to form a coherent sentence, but you form coherent paragraphs out of nowhere, like, with, with content. Again, like, I it's not just filler though. words. Like, you have whole, like, maybe your brain just operates differently, you I think know? it does. I'm, like, I, like, read things really fast, and I, like, process all the information mm. really quick. Like, I can, like, I think I read, like, the entire Britney Spears book in, like, two hours, and I, like, can tell you, like, everything that happened in the book. You need to see, like, a, a behavioral, like, therapist or something. You might actually have, like, a mental... I don't think I should. <laughs> You're I'm, worried what you might find I'm out? I'm worried what I might, what I might find out. <laughs> but speaking of that TED Talk you had about why Lisa should go home, in hindsight, do you still stand by your decision uh, about why she should go home and why and the explanation you gave? Or do you regret giving the entire terms and conditions in that moment? Um, I... I and I acknowledge this to her and publicly on like our reunion, but mm -hmm. I do think that the way I said it was a little harsh. Mm -hmm. I looking back, if somebody said that to me, I'd be pissed. Yeah. She had every right to be mad, but that's literally just that's mm -hmm. how I felt. Yeah. And I felt like in that moment, it would have been a bit of a cop out, like some other people did, to mm -hmm. say this person deserves to go home because they're big competition. Because if anything, them being big competition means that they're doing good, which would not be the they don't grounds deserve to, go home. to be deserving to go home. Yeah. So I was thinking, I didn't want to go based off track record because I don't think that necessarily doing the best in doing statistically the best at something, even though I do like to throw around that statistically, I was second best in the competition. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that that warrants you, like, needing to win. I think that being America's Drag Superstar takes a little more than, like, 
winning all the challenges. It takes like something that I just felt like a like je ne sais quoi. Like the other competitors just had a little extra something that, in my opinion, um, Lucy, mm -hmm. I did not see in Lucy at the time. Well, she had a Taco Bell baby bump. She did. And I think that's where it started. I was like, girl, you weren't pregnant. <laughs> Beyonce was pregnant. The, that baby in Lucy's bed, he said, now why am I in it? Now why am I in it? You see how they put me in it? <laughs> but with season 16 rolling around, the dust from season 15 is settling now. But what was it like for you whenever you were filming season 15 and like seeing all the fan reception, both the positive and the negative, like what was that experience like for you? Because I know you've suffered some of the a lot of the worst of it online. Yeah. Um. It was, it was very weird because I was working all the time. So a lot of people will think that like, since you're working all the time, you have no downtime. You actually have a lot of moments of downtime. You're sitting in airports for hours. You're on planes for hours. You're like in like a hotel room, like because you land at like eight in the morning sometimes. So you're just like sitting in a hotel until you have to get ready for the gig that starts at like midnight. So there's a lot of time to just sit on your phone and look at everything everybody's saying. And while it didn't really affect me in ways where I was like really like emotionally impacted by it, it definitely was a little hard to like every week kind of just see everything you're doing be invalidated because I knew how amazing I did and I felt like I wasn't given like the like the flower, I guess like the flowers that I mm -hmm. deserved because everybody skirted over all the good things I was doing and just yeah. focused on like the three like kind of bad things that I did during the season. Yeah. I will say I didn't think you were giving your flowers is like for a lot of things you did, like being very, very referential, a lot of your fashions and stuff, but there was like a lot of people just shitting on you essentially. Yeah, for like no reason. Yeah. But like, like with that, you said it wasn't affecting you emotionally, but like how, how was it affecting you though? Like it made me really introspective in like the wrong way. Like I was thinking a lot about what I was doing and I was thinking a lot about what I did on the show and I was kind of just like regretting, like there was a moment where I was like, fuck, like why did I do this? Like this is like my dream. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there was a, like a split second where I was like, if I had not done this, maybe I would feel a lot better about myself right now. Mm -hmm. Like, my drag was invalidated. People, like, invalidated my performance skills. People invalidated me as a person. People invalidated my experience growing up. People invalidated pretty much every part of me that could be invalidated. People mm -hmm. called me ugly. People called... Which is, like, how could you? But it's, like... Right. Yeah, people were just, like, really shitty to me, and I just did not know why. And I could see if I had gone in there, like... Oh, I'm going to be like, this is how I'm going to be. Whereas, like, no, I literally just went in and I was like, I'm going to be myself. And that's how it was. And to see people, like, hating me for being myself, which is, like, that was hard. Because, like, you can say whatever you want about my drag. Like, it's my art. I mean, it means a lot to me. But, like, yeah. I don't care what you say about that. It's, like, people are attacking, like, my personal attributes, which really made me very hesitant. Even, like, some of the girls on my season, like, when I got back from filming, I could tell that they didn't really like me. Mm -hmm. And I was just, like, really confused. And it kind of, like, hurt my feelings mm -hmm. because I was just, like... I In my head, I and I still stand by this, I didn't do anything to anyone mm -hmm. but walk in every day ready for a day to happen and know that I was going to kill it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that kind of threw people off because of, like, the... Yeah. competitive setting or something but I just did not know what I did to any of the girls to make them like not want to talk to me and I felt like I was so like like when I got back like so eager to like talk to everyone mm -hmm. and it was kind of just like nobody really wanted to talk to me like in our group chat like I felt like I was being ignored and like I just like was kind of just like what did I do like wrong yeah. and I was also compounding with like, again like all the things people were saying online attacking your person people that didn't even know you so it just kind of added fuel to the fire. Yeah, I just felt, for a lot of the time, even, like, especially, like, losing Drag Race is when it, like, really, like, when it started to get close to the finale, mm -hmm. I that's when, like, it really started to set in, like, oh, my God, people really do not like you. Like, when I would look at the numbers comparatively, it's, like, Team Lux, Team Mistress, Team Sasha. Mm -hmm. I was, like, dead last by, like, thousands in, like, every poll. Like, no, I felt like 
I went into the finale feeling like the only person who wants me to win is myself and my family and, like, a little bit of the fan. Like, I felt like as many fans as I have and as many followers and stuff, the negative noise was just clouding my head so much. Mm -hmm. I really was just, like, I'm kind of the only person who wants to see me win. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't win, I was like, fuck. Mm -hmm. I, they're, like... They yeah. won. But with the finale, too, they took, like, the top four, and then from the top four, they chose a top two, and you and Mistress were excluded from that. And my understanding as someone that attended the finale and, you know, being in the circle of, like, Rue Girls is that that was very upsetting to you, like, in person. Uh, is this something you want to talk about? Or? Yeah, I can talk okay. about yeah. it. So, like, like how, how did it feel in that moment? Was it almost, like, affirming these negative thoughts that you had about yourself? It was... That was prob mentally probably the craziest day of my life because... I was already going into the finale. I kept telling my drag daughter, Lana, Lana Jure, go follow her, she's a king. Um, she was helping me backstage. And I kept telling her, I was like, she was like, oh, you're going to kill it. Like, you're, get ready to like lip sync. Like, you're going to be in the top scene. I was like, Lana, I, I do not know. I was like, Lana, like, typically, like, you know, I'm like, I like, am about to kill it. I was like, I know I'm about to go out there and do everything I have to do. And I know I'm going to be perfect. But even if I do make it to the top, I don't know if I want to win because I felt like anybody who I would have beat, my entire experience would have been everybody telling me I didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. And that day, knowing that I went in there and I did everything right, I checked every box and I still did not win or I still didn't get what I felt like I deserved out of it, mm -hmm. which I guess is like a shitty thing to do. Like don't go into things feeling like you need to, like you deserve something. Yeah. But like, I went, I left the set of Drag Race, like, I'm going to be in the top two, and I have a great chance at winning. And then I got to the, I, like, got to the finale, and I was, like, thinking about how crazy my mental shift was from leaving the set of Drag Race to being at the final moment of mm -hmm. Drag Race. It was just, like, my world was kind of, like, collapsing. But I went out there, and I did It's Giving Fashion, and everybody loved it. And when I didn't make the top two, I was visibly... I, people were like, oh, Lux is pissed. And I was. Because I at that point, I felt like, what else could I have done? I felt like I did everything that I could have to try mm -hmm. to make my dream come true. And it was just crushed in front of my face. And an audience of people who I know didn't want to see me win. I felt like, and this is no shade to Sasha, but I felt like, like there was no way that I could even be seen because everybody was so enamored with her, which is like, I'm happy for her. Like, that's amazing. I'm glad that she won. But I was just like, it was kind of just like a what about me? I was like, I did, I did amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I like beat Bianca Del Rio's record of never landing below safe for 11 or 12 consecutive episodes. And nobody ever talks about that. And I just got to the finale and I was like, all of that is invalid because everybody hates me. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I lose Drag Race today, it's because all of the fans all of the fandom hated me so much where they couldn't see past me saying that my hair was 40 inches or yeah. they couldn't see past me saying I wouldn't metal to where they put that energy out into the world and that is what stopped me from getting where I needed to go. Yeah. It really hurt. And I don't think I ever really emotionally processed any of it because I just went up to my hotel room and I was like, okay, I lost, what's next? I like, didn't let myself think about it because if I thought about it for too much, I felt like I would have been in a hole where I knew I wouldn't be able to get out. I, it really, it really sucked. <laughs> is, 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 that, is that time something you, like, recovered from, or do you still carry, like, a lot of, like, negative feelings from that time? Do you have, like, regrets of the way you went about everything? No, I don't regret any of it. Um, so, well, no, I'd be lying if I'd say sometimes I was just like, girl, like, if only you had, like, went in and been, like, super bubbly and, like, super, like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, like, qualified to, like, win this or I don't know if I'm going to do well at every challenge, even though I've studied literally everything that you have to do for the show, like, not even just based on the show, just, like, mm -hmm. in life. Like, I knew I had all the skill sets to win. I don't think I should have been, like, scrutinized for knowing that I could. Yeah. And I was like, well, should I have gone in and, like, not been as confident? But then, like, that would have been such a disservice to me because, like, that's just who I am. That's how I go about my daily life. It's not like something I threw on for TV. It's like, I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I'm sickening, mm -hmm. you know? But that's, you kind of just have to do that. And especially yeah. for me in this world, it's like, as someone who is like me, you have to be your biggest cheerleader because nobody 
like the stats shown mm -hmm. wants to see you win yeah well, well you mentioned earlier like uh with you know on top of like all the audience and fan reception too, like the girls in your season, you felt like there was a distance, distance between you and them with them like not wanting to talk to you or feeling excluded. Is that something that still occurs now or have you mended those bridges or has like the group chat kind of fizzled out for you guys too? Um, I feel like, I don't Again, know. Again, you don't say anything you don't want to. No, it's just... fine. Um, everybody talks to pretty much who they want to. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people I kind of never really talk to like that. There are some people I've always talked to. There's some people I talk to more. There's some people that I kind of don't talk to. It's kind of just like, mm -hmm. everybody's like, just going on their own like lane. And yeah. I think that's fine. But in the, when I first got back, I was like, it really hurt me. And I don't think I ever like said anything because I knew that everybody would just be like, okay, whatever. Like, like yeah. you were a bitch. And it's like, I don't really think I was. And I don't want to like gaslight anybody, but I don't think, I, I wasn't intentionally mean to anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. wasn't like, I was like very, like, I like, I, like, gave people advice when they asked for it. And, like, I was, like, really, like, nice and cheery to everybody. I wasn't, like, reading people. I wasn't, like, nasty to anyone. I wasn't mean. I wasn't confrontational. I just don't know what else I could have done. It's a lot of my whole post-drag race experience has been a lot of I don't know what else I could have done. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I was just curious about, like, your headspace, kind of what you experienced. I'm not going to ask you to, like, say names or anything like that because I don't want to stir up drama between you and Mistress and why you guys don't talk. But... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just just something you touched on. I just wanted to reiterate about it. Yeah. Or elaborate on. I don't think I've ever, like, publicly, like, said, like, how much, like, like, it's really affected me, like, mentally. Yeah. So. Well, also, interviews don't ever ask that. They're always just like, so was the wig really 40 inches? And I'm like, oh, my God, no, it wasn't. Like, no, that's my next question. But we have other stuff to talk about, too. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I've, a lot of people, like, you know, they talk about like wig gate and stuff like that and your drag and the references, but I feel like something a lot of people don't talk about like is your, your makeup. I know this is a very big tonal shift, but <laughs> can only be depressed for so long. Um, with your makeup though, like prior to 2019, you were doing the classic drag ex uh, exclamation mark nose, but since then you've kind of done like a little T like shape nose. When did you kind of sh make that shift to your uh, iconic mug that you have now? Like what was the inspiration behind that? I want to say it really kicked in in like 2020. Mm -hmm. That's when I really started, like, doing the, like, mm -hmm. um, and I, it kind of was, like, I saw how, like, Naomi Smalls contoured her nose, because whenever I did the little exclamation point, it just never, like, looked flattering on me. I was mm -hmm. always, like, this looks wrong, like, my nose isn't shaped like this. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm drawing, like, an exclamation point on, like, on, like, a circle. Mm -hmm. It's like, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work. So I was, like, she has, like, a similar shaped nose to me. And I was like, okay, let me try to, like, kind of play with, like, how she does hers. And then that's kind of how I got mm -hmm. there. And now I'm kind of regressing back. Yeah. There's, like, a, a few queens, like you said, at Naomi Smalls, like, you, I think. Lucy uh, Stool also consorts her nose very similarly. Lucy Stool, Where it's, like, queens that kind of, like, more, like, embrace the features that they have. Because I, I do think there's another conversation to be had about how, like, a lot of drag does adhere to, like, Eurocentric beauty standards. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a, a lot more longer of a conversation to be had, you know, probably a whole podcast with a bunch of queens. But it's one thing I noticed about your your contour. It's like instead of drawing on a completely new nose, it's not yours. You kind of like embrace the shape that you have and it's just kind of accentuate it in a different way. I personally love interesting noses. I mm -hmm. think that a lot of supermodels have very interesting like facial features and things that are very unique to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that the nose is your focus, like the center of your face. I think that it should be like prominent. I think that it should be showcased. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to showcase my nose, but still like, you know, mm -hmm. make it draggy. Yeah. It is like, it's so different because like 2019, 2020, like your eye makeup hasn't changed that much. The lips are the same. It's just like your nose is different, but it really goes from like a very standard looking drag queen to like, oh, that's Lux. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just very like the juxtaposition between the two. Yeah. With such like a subtle change. People like are like, when I was like really like coming up like on Instagram and stuff, like that was the one thing that people really identified with. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, her nose. That's the one thing. They're like, oh, you're the girl with the nose. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. You're like, yeah. I do have a nose. Thank you for noticing. I, like, I think most people have noses. Yeah. So I guess mine's special. Well, everyone else contours theirs away, you know? Very so, true. Yeah. Um, Let's get that <laughs> nose. Wait, what is that? Um, season six, um, when Milk and Magnolia Crawford meet for the first time. Oh, Milk yeah. Looks at Magnolia Crawford and like comes this close to her face. She's like, look at that nose. I love it. Again, you were just like a Rolodex of references. Oh. But with your aesthetic also comes like your fashions. Again, something you're probably most known for. 
your biggest impact on the season, I think, was a lot of the fashion looks that you did, including winning the design challenge. Um, with that, what was more devastating for you, though? Losing Glam Slam to Olivia Lux's unlined and unhimmed holiday dress or losing the most fashionable in high school? Um, most fashionable, I think, because at least Olivia would know how to pronounce Hermes. Um, the person who won pronounced Hermes as Hermes. Mm. And I was like, there's no way that I just lost to that. Mm. Um, but high school is all a... Like, it's all a popularity contest, so I am a little intrigued as to how I lost to Olivia Lux, because I thought that was a popular contest. Damn, Reed. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I love Olivia. <laughs> but I but do think I should have won. I was, I, I was, because I was watching that recently at the Glam Slam, because I was like, oh, we catch up on what Lux has done a year since the last interview has happened. Glam Slam did. And I saw the outfit she won. Everyone's like, oh, we love that. And I'm like, she has the white fur that's, like, unhemmed. And which, I'm, I'm partial to white fur that's unhemmed, but, you know, I'm also, like... She didn't even like him it, though. Yeah, it was... <clears throat> just I saying. Know. It was... I say that as an Olivia Lux stand too. I love Olivia. Like, that's my girl. But mm. I, I don't know what happened. Said the Luxes. Yeah, and it was, like, voted by the girls. So I was, like... Mm. Mm. Drag Race all over again. Yeah. Just thousands of votes. Thousands of votes. It's, like, <laughs> every time someone has to vote, like, a majority of people have to vote towards me, I know it's not going to go in my favor. <laughs> like, I just know it's not. <laughs> But just like a short of the side conversation, talking about like followers and stuff, you actually have a lot more followers than I thought you did. Because I thought that, you know, you go into the finale and you said the thousands of people that were rooting for Nitra and Sasha. And also with newer seasons, like girls just aren't getting followers the same way that they used to. People just kind of pick a few favorites. But I was looking online, you have more followers than me. I thought, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm popping off. I'm making moves. And then I looked at the Insta your Instagram. I got humbled. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm still, still I, lagging I behind. I had a lot of followers before I got on Drag Race. Yeah, I yeah. think I had like... I had, like, 35K when I left to film Drag Race, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, I've had, like, some, like, reels go viral and things like that. People also kind of just, like, I, like, post a lot on Instagram. And I think I post, like, good content. Mm -hmm. So I think that people like to see it. But it was strange. I was like, I'm getting so many followers. But, like, nobody wants, none of them, like, are, like, polling for me to win. <laughs> Well, that's what you get for buying them. Very See, true. Next time. Listen, you listen, have to do it organically. I know I know. you probably think all black people look the same, but I'm not Malaysia. I look like this in person. <laughs> exactly like this. Exactly you, like you this. Show, you show up to a Lux gig, this is what you can expect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you look like me coming into the into the club with like my suitcase and just a mug on. I like to leave the house. like I like to leave the hotel like dressed, though. Mm -hmm. I like to feel the fantasy. I like to like, get in the car and I'm like, hi, for Lux. They're like, right this way, sir. Literally, and I'm like, okay, great. Okay. <laughs> but talking about your music career, like, you released a few singles and, like, an LP, but when, when do you plan to actually release, like, a debut album? Because I know some people are clamoring for it. You keep teasing little singles and music videos and stuff, but when is, like, the debut album coming? Hmm. There's a lot of Drag Race girls putting out something, but when are we getting music, you know? There's a lot of sound in the air, but music is mm -hmm. coming very soon. Yeah. Um, I plan on releasing an album at some point this year, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to, like, give a premature birth. I want the baby to be fully developed. Mm -hmm. So, like, nine months? No. That's fair. No, Do well, you already have, like, all the song lists and everything? Or is it still, like, in its infancy? Is it still being worked out? It's a work in progress. Okay. So you still got room for verses. Because, you know, I'm a, I'm an, I've recently entered the rap game. So if you need someone to hop heard. on a verse, you know. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah, I'll let me know. I'll call you if I need you. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I will wait with bated breath. <laughs> I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> I don't I don't think I really there are a couple collaborations that I want on the album. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to spill that here because I want them to actually happen. But there's a couple things that I want to happen for this album and a couple people that I want on this album. Okay. And they're in the works. With, with your music, I'm partial to Kitty Interlude myself, but like what, what is your favorite song that you've done and what's your favorite song that's upcoming? <sighs> Just to tease it. Um, my favorite song that I've done, I think, is Let It All Hang Out. Mm, that's the newest single. It's the newest single. At the time of filming. Yeah. No, it is the newest single. I don't think it'll be out by the time this comes out, the next single. But, um, I think Let It All Hang Out, and I really, I really like Kitty Interlude. Mm -hmm. Um, I do not like really any of the songs on Pretty Privileged, though. Okay. Except Rounds and Around. I think Rounds and Around's a bop. Mm -hmm. But, like, all the other ones, I think they're horrible. Mm -hmm. Like, Lux Nation, everybody loves that song. I think that song is horrible. Do you actually mean that? Or are you in your Doja Cat era where you're just like, all oh, that music was trash. If you like that, you have shit taste. No, I, I, like, you can, like, like it. But mm -hmm. I just do not 
like listening back to it like the vocals are not good like the lyrics are like whatever like mm-hmm. i just don't think it's i just don't think it's good mm. Damn, now you, I kind of rushed. Not, I kind of rushed the project. I did. Not you being your biggest critic. You're like, I'm confident I could do anything, but me, your first album is the one thing where you're just like, yeah, I could have done better on that. No, I could have. Like, I'm very self aware. Like, I know when like something hits and when something doesn't. Like, when I was in the bottom for the makeover challenge, I knew I was gonna. I knew I was lip syncing. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, well, this is what it is. Like, yeah, it's what it is. Um, I'm a very self aware person, but yeah, that music, it's not my favorite. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad that people like it. Yeah. But all the stuff you've been doing, though, like making albums, you know, doing all these like editorials, traveling the world. Like, what what is it like to be on top of this mountain doing all this stuff and then looking back at yourself four years ago when you were asking people to help you pay your phone bill on Twitter? It's it's wild that like, well, first of all, how do you know that? <laughs> because that's like, like, what did you like look up to see that? I do my research. But, like, what, like, did you, like, search, like, phone bill? Like, Venmo? <laughs> Why would I? That'd be oddly specific. I don't know, but, like, yeah, I mean, I, I, well, at the time, I was, I needed my phone bill paid because I was like, well, if Drag Race calls, I need my mm-hmm. phone to be on. But I think straight, at, straight talk, I assume. No, T-Mobile. Oh, um, okay. Girl, I might have been broke, but I had expensive taste. But, um, yeah, I needed help paying my phone bill. I wasn't really working. Um... So I was like, if anybody wants to help me pay my phone bill, boom. My laptop broke once. I was like, I need $600 for my laptop. Can somebody help me pay my laptop? Mm-hmm. And like, I got like some money. So it's like, I'm never too, I'm never too proud to beg. Yeah. Like, well, growing up, like you mentioned earlier, like you weren't like rich, but like you did grow up with like a little bit of like privilege with like your family and stuff like that. Did they help you at all in like your drag journey? Or was it very like once you left the house, you were kind of on your own? Well, I still live with my parents. Oh, okay. I've never not lived with them. Unless I was in college, but... So whenever you did, like, the Out of the Closet, that was at your parents' house? Yeah, I live... Oh. But we live in, like, a like a three-story house. Mm-hmm. And I, like, live on the third floor, like, in the attic. And it's, like, one room, and then there's, like, a, like a, a wall with a door, and then there's another room. I sleep in one room, and my drag sleeps in the other room. Mm. So my Out of the Closet was in my parents' house. Oh. And the interview was in our living room. <laughs> But I would say that they haven't really... They helped me a little with Drag Race. Like, they mm-hmm. gave me a little money. Um, like, a small loan of, like, like $100,000. I'm kidding. Um, no. They helped me a little bit. I didn't really want... I wanted the people who were a part of the process to be very small. Mm-hmm. It was me, my boyfriend, and, like, two of my friends, Max, and, like, the designers. But I only went to, like, five designers, probably. And I wanted it to be very intimate, and I wanted it to not be a whole bunch of people involved. I wanted to kind of do everything myself. I wanted it to be very hands-on. Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted pictures of everything that, like, anything that was sewn, I was like, please send me a picture of it. Like, any alteration, like, please send me a picture of it. Like, I need it to be micromanaging everything. Like, I had, like, sheets of, like, paper with, like, everything, like, written out that I would, like, sit on my bed, like, on FaceTime, and, like, cross out and, like, write and, like... Mm-hmm. I would make sure that everything was perfect. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm very like that. And my parents would always be like, oh, do you need like any help with anything? And I'd be like, no, I got it. And you're like, mom, get out of my room. Literally, I was like, no, I got it. Because I don't, they just wouldn't understand like where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. I did ask like for- They the, wouldn't get the reference. The only time they really helped me was when I asked them like, when you think of Beyonce, like what outfit do you like see? Mm-hmm. And then they were like, I don't know. <laughs> and they were, like, looking stuff up and, like, sending me a picture. They'd be like, oh, this one would be cute to do. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Mm. Um, and I would be like, what do you think of this one? And they'd be like, no, that's too basic. I'd be like, what do you think of that one? And they'd be like, no, that's, like, too much. Like, it's whatever. It's ugly. Which I was like, ooh. Um, but, yeah, they helped me do that. And they made my cinder block for my Beautiful Nightmare outfit. They, like, painted it and, like, made it like out of foam and everything Mm -hmm. so that was fun my dad like is like a masonry like worker so like he like carves Mm -hmm. stone for like a living like Mm -hmm. for like pools and like decks and like houses and things like that so like oh this is perfect for you to do and that was something i was like i don't feel like doing it so like make this that's a mainly ass job is that where you get your masculinity from your dad um yeah Yeah. i think so um i like grew up watching him like you know come home from work like exhausted from like cutting stone and i was like that's that's what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, you're exuding so much just masculine energy, testosterone. Thanks. Yeah. 
<laughs> I took a shot of testosterone before I. This whole tea shot. Oh, you like? <laughs> that's, that's, that's very WeHo. I combined the tea shot with the steroid and the protein powder. Mm, so I'm like, yeah, one stop shop. Yeah. Yeah. Give me one shot. One shot of yeah. testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Which, like, really, for me, it should be, like, give me one shot, one shot of estrogen. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if I took a shot of estrogen, I'd, like, explode. Yeah. It'd be, like... It'll go right to your thighs. And then, and then you'll blow up. Yeah, because they'll be, like, it's too much cunt, you know? Yeah. It's, just, the cunt, it's overflowing. And a cunt overload. <laughs> Busting at the seams. Literally. Moderate to be your cunt severity. Busting from the nipples. Yeah. As, as we say, like, with this past year, you've gone through so many things, like making new music. You also went to the Emmys. I did. I, I can personally say from my experience, you know, I was just a plus one just there at the Emmys. And I went there when we lost. Like, how exciting was it for you, though, just to be there, to go on that stage with everyone, and then be upstaged by Princess Poppy, of all people? It was a lot of fun, and I wasn't surprised that I was upstaged by Poppy. Mm. Um, she can use the clout. I, I, I'm fine. Um, I, I, have, I have relevance from, like, other things. But um, That's fair. Um, I was a little pissed, though. And you can kind of see it in, like, the group shots. Like, there's a video of our whole cast. It seems like a lot of people were pissed. I, it, well, we were, it was a lot of, like, where are we going? What are we doing? Yeah. Um, but I was pissed because I wanted a solo picture on the red carpet. <laughs> mm. I wanted, like, my own picture so I could be, like, Luxor London is on the red carpet of the Emmys. Like, like not associated, like, this is going to sound really fucked up. But, like, not associated with the cast. Just, like, me being mm -hmm. there as, like, yeah. Lux. I mean, as we say, you don't fucks with the cast anyway. Oh, my so, God, no. I know. love them. So some people are gonna gag that she just did that. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> you, are you from New York even? <laughs> you have to leave that in. I'm telling you, like the girls are gonna live that she just did that bad. I just my drag mom, so you know. No shade. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my mother. Um, <laughs> it's what, uh, over. Yeah, me and Aja shaking ass at the deli. You know, do what we do. Boots, yeah. Um, <laughs> it feels, I feel like it's just guys being dudes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but like, the energy, like, talk, talking about that at the Emmys, though, the energy of that is very, like, that video of the girl who's trying to blow out the candles at the other girl's birthday party <laughs> and getting upset. Yes. That's, like, very, very that. Like, it's not your moment. You got invited to be there as a plus one. Yeah, I mean, I was, like, I was, of course, I was honored to be there with the entire cast, mm -hmm. well, most of the entire cast. And I thought that, like, I was, like, it's so cool that we're all here together. And I wanted to take a picture with everybody. Like, I was enthused to be on the red carpet with everyone. I just also wanted my solo moment, you yeah. know? What was going through your head, though, whenever you're all getting together, you get to the hotel, you're all coming down to the lobby, and then you see fucking the Green Goblin just, like, shuffling through? <laughs> I lived, and I had a sneaking suspicion because she sent me a pair of boots, and she was okay. like, "Do you know where I can get these boots?" And they were like green, like monster boots, and I was, but like they're like a designer, <clears throat> and I was like, "No, I don't." But why do you need them? I was like, "Are you like coming to the Emmys?" And she was like, "No," and she like sent like a little like smirky face, and I was like, "Oh, she's pulling a stunt." Mm. Um, so yeah. But I thought it was, like, fabulous. Mm. I thought it was really fun, and I love, like, when Poppy, like, trolls people. I think that's so clever, and, mm. like, I'm obsessed with that. Yeah, Poppy, keep doing what you do. But also, I, she's, like, an amazing, like, she was an amazing drag queen. Past tense. Past tense, because, I mean, I like to respect people's, like, whatever those pronoun things people do these days. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like to respect people's, like, vibe. Like, if it's not for me, it's, like, you know, like, like being gay, like, that's not me. Like, I would never. Yeah. But, like, I respect as, as, lo as long as they don't put it in your face, you're fine. Like, don't, like, be in my face with it. Like, that's, like, now you're doing too much. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> as a straight guy, you can't say you're doing too much. Not you're doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. Yeah. I want her to do drag again, because she was, like, really good at it. Mm hmm Well, I don't. I want her to keep trolling, so... Work. But you're not a stranger to you know character work too because you went to I should say you went to school for musical theater. You were on the dean's list for multiple semesters, but you dropped out of college one with one semester left. Like what, what was your decision behind that? Um, I think I was on the dean's list twice. Um, That's multiple. I guess maybe even only once. I don't know. <laughs> I was not like a studious person ever. But, um, but you were making it through college though. Yeah, but. It was only, like, the musical theater courses. It was never, like, the... <laughs> the first two years. Yeah. At the extracurriculars. The, like, mm -hmm. the way that, like, my college worked, it was, like, we had to take, like, harmony and, like, ear training classes. They're, like, music theory classes. Oh, and those like, are the ones you fail. I hate that music theory. That explains so those are the, the ones first, that I would yeah. fail. That explains the EP. Mm hmm Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I dropped out because I was kind of just, like, over it. I didn't think that I would... It was doing me a service. I felt like... I was trying to get... It was hard balancing starting a drag career 
and being in school because I couldn't work during the weekdays and that's when like mm -hmm. the like amateur competition things were happening or like the people who could give me a gig like mm -hmm. their gigs were during the week and I couldn't do it because I had school so it was like that and then like commuting back and forth was like a lot like late at night it was like unsafe like I didn't have like money so I wasn't gonna be like ubering back and forth um so I was just like, I'm done. I got everything I could from the experience, mm -hmm. and I auditioned for Drag Race, and then I got on. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like I was meant to drop out, I think. Yeah, but no, with you like dropping out, obviously things did turn in a different direction for you. You got on Drag Race, you're now experiencing all the success. So with that in mind, is your aunt still mad at you for dropping out? I'm sure she is, mm -hmm. um, but I can't do anything about that. <laughs> I thought, like, that was so, like, weird, like, random to just bring up. It was like, oh, so, like, when do you go back to school? And I was like, I'm not going back to school. And she was like, what do you mean? She was like, did you, she was like oh, you graduated. And I was like, no, I, I dropped out. And she was like, no. And I was like, yeah, I, I dropped out. And then she was like, why would you do that? No, like, you have to go back to school. Like, you need your degree. And I was like, I'm telling you I don't. And this is before I was announced on Drag Race. So I think I was announced on Drag Race, like, a month or two after. Mm -hmm. But... I was just like, no, I I actually don't need school. Like, it's not like she it's not like she was paying for me to go to school. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, like I paid for this, and you're gonna drop out. Like, girl, no, like that's not your business. It's not your business. Yeah, she's gonna watch this interview. She won't. She's gonna be so upset. You don't know. You know my audience. My audience is wide reaching. I mean, it's a wide net. You don't know. Why not? But I think a lot of people in the Drag Race fandom don't realize that you're actually in a drag house with the likes of. Mo Hart, Black Peppa, and many other people. How did you get involved in a drag family with Mo Hart and them? Um, she found me on Instagram during quarantine and asked me to do like her digital drag show. And I was like, oh my God, yes. And then I submitted my number and it was so sickening. And she was like, oh, I like, do you have a drag mother? Like, I want you to be my drag daughter. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, the rest is her story. Uh, how, far, uh, how far back was that from Drag Race? That was 2020 and I got on Drag Race in 2022. Okay, so like a couple years. She kind of like prophesized me being on season 15 mm -hmm. because um, we, she was on Instagram Live and I like popped in and she like saw that I was there and she's like, oh, there's my daughter Lux. She's going to be on season 15 of Drag Race. Mm -hmm. She's like, not this season, but the next one. Um, and I was auditioning for season 14 at the time. And I was like, why would she say that? Your drag mom literally said like, yeah, she's not going to be on this one, but like, maybe was, next one. I was like, why would she say that? And then, yeah. like, I didn't get on. And then, like, all of the signs kind of just, like, led me to season 15. Mm -hmm. It was, like, very scary how, like, season 15 was my season of Drag Race. Like, I remember it was the summer before I auditioned for Drag Race. And me and my friends were going to the beach. <laughs> and the only parking spot that was available was 1515. And when we were pulling up, we were talking about Drag Race. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh my God, that's like crazy. It's like when I moved into like my new house, it's 15. And I was like, that's like scary. There's like other like number things. It's like the number 23, but for you it's 15, just everywhere you look. It like 15 was so prevalent in like me before Drag Race. It mm -hmm. was weird. But as we talked throughout this interview, uh, you're known for many things in drag, your performance style, your fashions, 40 inch wigs. And most importantly, your extensive knowledge of Drag Race itself. Okay. And so with that in mind, I want to do a quick round of Drag Race trivia to test your knowledge. Work. Some of these are some pretty softball questions, but I think there's some that might stump you. But okay. we're going to find out. You might surprise me. Or you maybe might surprise, surprise you. You might clock me. No shit. <laughs> okay. Drag trivia with Lux Noir London. Let's do it. In season eight, Night of 1000 Madonna's Runway became infamous due to four of the six remaining queens all wearing what? A kimono. Madonna, nothing really matters music video. Oh, damn. I just wrote kimono, so you even have like, more knowledge. I feel like I'm going to ask these questions, and you're going to give even more elaborate answer than I, I even have. Nothing really matters. <laughs> it's a softball. Who were the queens eliminated in the very first double elimination? Vivian Panay and Honey Mahogany. Do you remember the season or episode? Season five. And the lip sync song was Oops, I Did It Again. And the challenge was the, it was like the RuPaul like ballet. Which queen did so bad at Snatch Game, she later issued a formal apology to Katy Perry. Those sad words. <laughs> Hashtag RuPology. I love that tweet so much. <laughs> Which one of these people has never been a guest judge? Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez, Kesha, or Ariana Grande? Selena Gomez. Damn, no hesitation. <laughs> Binda La Creme famously nominated herself for elimination, but she wasn't the first. Who was? The first queen. Chanel. Season one. Damn. 
I do not want to be here. Mm -hmm. You have not said that I was beautiful. You are beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. And she's still lip synced against Rebecca Glasscog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Who was the first queen ever eliminated on Snatch Game? The first queen ever eliminated on Snatch Game was um, season season two. Um, Tatiana won. Was it Kylie Sonique Love? It was. Lady Gaga. Trust. Uh, Sorry, Kylie Sonique no, Love. No, that, that was uh, to Two of Hearts. Yeah, Two of Hearts. Yeah. I, but she played Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you said the song was Lady Gaga. No. Okay, never mind. See? Morgan and Michaels was pink. She was Lady Gaga. Mm-hmm. The song was Two of Hearts. Morgan did the Two of Hearts. Mm-hmm. And another fun fact, uh, Kylie Sonique's Love, um, her, her lip sync to that song was the very first lip sync with an outfit reveal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, like, the first queen to do a backflip in the splits and RuPaul not make a facial expression. Yeah. Morgan McMichaels, absolutely, like... She bodied it, she yeah. She bodied it. Yeah. For me, though, it was, like, Kylie did good, too. And, like, the way they just, like, stared at her like she was crazy. Yeah. And now they, like, scream the whenever that, a queen like, jumps Morgan, on their butt. like, moved her body and did the, like... Yeah. The arms. It's... I know. So I wish she still did stuff like that. But, you know, with her age, her hips aren't as good. <laughs> Following the fight between Sharon and the artist formerly known as Fifi O'Hara... Who broke the tension by uttering the callback, Jesus is a biscuit? Kenya Michaels. Was well, Kenya Michaels. Jesus is Jesus a biscuit. This week. <laughs> Who wrote the very first mirror message? Shangela. Damn. Who is the oldest competitor on Drag Race? Charlie Hydes. Okay, this is what this might be a kind of a hard one. It's a little it's a little more niche. So the winner of your season, Sasha Colby, was a former Miss Continental, but she wasn't the first. Of the, uh, in, within Drag Race, there have been five former Miss Continentals. Can you name three of them? I can. Brooklyn Heights, Nisha Lopez, Victoria Porkchop Parker. Yep. Do you know any more? Um, one of them's an international one. Oh, um, Vanessa Van Cartier. Yeah. And, um... <sighs> Nisha, Brooklyn, Sasha, Porkchop, and... I think that's it. Uh, one more is um, Roxy Andrews. <gasps> Roxy Andrews is Miss Continental Plus. Yep. Yep. And Victoria Parker also won Plus. So, but yeah, that's the five. But yeah, so that, that is like last bit of questions that I have. But I do have one final question for you. Probably the most important one of the interview. Okay. Herb, Sims in the City, or The Sims Busting Out? Oh my God. You, <laughs> you ate that. Ah. Oh, I don't know. They both hold such like a special like place mm-hmm. in like my heart. Because, like, I, like, those were, like, my favorite... The Sims was my favorite game growing up. And I think mm-hmm. it's because of the whole, like, you can, like, create your own world or your own universe yeah. or whatever. Um, so he's, like, at home just boxing ferrets. Yeah. Yeah. I would, <laughs> Those black-eyed peas. I don't know. I think I like them both equally. Mm-hmm. But with that, that is the last bit of time that we have today and the last of my questions. But before you go, I did want to give you something to thank you for coming in today. Okay. Um, you can probably guess what it is. But I wanted I to get you <gasps> a PS2 oh copy of the Are Herbs, you kidding me? Sims in the Wait, City. how did you get this, eBay? Don't worry about it. Okay. I know oh people. my god, this is crazy! Because you recently got a PS2 and you asked someone online to get you the Herb Sims in the City. So I did? I was assu- a long time ago, but I was assuming... I was that- really poor, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm assuming no one got it for you, no. so I went ahead and reached out and oh got it for god, you. Oh my god, this is wild! So you can listen to all the Simlish soundtracks from the Black Eyed Peas. Like, they- this is crazy! <laughs> oh my god, I don't even... Can I find my PS2 anywhere? I'll order another one tonight, yeah. actually. What was it about like this game and Sims busting out that was like so important to you as a child what what was it so impactful for you because like you you act surprised but you've actually mentioned the herbs and the sims in general several times i tweet about it a lot yeah i'm like a simmer like i I still play the sims i don't i think i really i love the black eyed peas Mm -hmm. like i was a huge black eyed peas fan and i love the sims and i think that like this one was just so cool i don't it was something about it Mm -hmm. and with busting out I think it was, like, my parents might have got it for me for Christmas because it was The Sims. And I was playing Sims, like, really young, like, when you should not be, like, playing The Sims. Mm -hmm. And I was playing The Sims when I was, like, six years old. Like, seven years old, like, Mm -hmm. playing The Sims. And, like, they got me this game, I guess, like, for Christmas for my birthday or, like... Not you at six, woohooing. Literally. Um, (laughs) 
Fuck, that's it. Listen, <laughs> I, I'm straight. Listen, I've been thinking about sex. That, like, that was probably your first experiences where you're making boys kiss in The Sims at a young age. Yeah, I think so. Or like, yeah. I would always have like women be. I would all, like, I would always be like the woman. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to have a part two in a couple months. Somewhere Carrie is shaking. A boots, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. I or maybe I bought it myself. I think I did buy it myself. I remember. Mm-hmm. When I bought it, I was at the mall with my grandmother, my uncle, and one of my other cousins. And y'all are going to gag. We were in EB Games. That's, like, not a thing. That's, like, GameStop. But, like, Mm -hmm. EB Games. We were in EB Games, and I was looking for Sims because I would always buy it. Like, I had, like, Sims 2, like, on, like, PC and, like, all of that. And I was just like, oh, my God, what's this one? I'm going to buy it because it was cheap. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can you buy me this game? And she's like, it's ready, like, T for Teen. And I was like, yeah, my parents let me play it. And then she, like, called my parents. And they were like, yeah, we let him play The Sims. Um, so she got it for me. And I remember playing it. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. I like, love it. This was, like, one of my favorite games on PlayStation 2. And whenever I saw you, like, tweeting about it, I was, like, my heart sank because I thought I was the only person in the world that even knew this mm-hmm. game existed or ever played it. It was also, like, one of my favorite games going up. Sims Buffy Again, like, Earth. I was, like, super Sims into the Black Eyed Peas around that time period, too. And if you go look back and listen to, like, the Simlish songs by them... Let's get it started. They are absolutely covering the original version of that song. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I remember, oh my God, this is this brings up so many things. I remember my like school did like a fundraiser where you could like do karaoke like during mm-hmm. lunch. And I oh, waited no. the end. <laughs> you didn't. If that video comes out, you're no, canceled. No, there's no to be wrong. I like, I waited the entire fucking lunch period. I was like late to class because I was like, if it's the last thing I do, I'm gonna do Let's Get It Started with karaoke in the fucking front of the entire lunchroom. Um, and it's because wait, of this. Wait, thing. The, the, let's Get It Started or the OG version? I think whatever the one they had on, like, I think it was Let's Get It Started. Okay. But um, I was like, this is, I was like, this is what I have to do. And it's because of this game, because I was playing this game mm. all the time. Like, I would get home from school and I would play this game. And. Yeah, I download, I like, on LimeWire, download, like, all of, like, Ella Funk and, like, because of, like, this game right here. This is crazy. Yeah. I would I, and something And you holding that PlayStation 2 game is making you look even more straight right now. You're sitting here manspreading with your Yankees hat and your PS2 copy of The Herbs. This is so sickening. Thank you, though. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Hopefully you find a system to play it on. Oh, I will. It's got God. the booklet and everything, so I'm gonna, I, get some reading material for the plane. Like, this is, like, a humble flex. I'm going to buy it, like, mm-hmm. no matter how much it costs, like, I'm going to buy it tonight. <laughs> so yeah. it's like... I, I looked on eBay. I tried to find a signed copy, but no one has gotten any of the Black Eyed Peas to sign one of these things. Speaking of signed things, this is going to sound crazy, but I contemplated buying a $5,000 pair of shoes that were signed by RuPaul, and she wore them in the Supermodel music video. And you're going to wear them on Drag Race? No, I can't fit her that shoes. That would have been a... Huh? I can't fit her shoes. You, so, you stuff like some like, paper towels in the toe? They're open-toed. Very much like growing up wearing your mom's shoes around the house. Boots. Yeah. But I, which I, I did. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, it'll work. But yeah, I contemplated buying a $5,000 pair of shoes that RuPaul wore on eBay, and I did it. Because I was like, that's a little too outrageous. Yeah. I feel like if you bought those shoes, that'd be the final nail where RuPaul would just make you the new host. No, she would probably be like, she would like, send like a restraining order i think to my oh. house <laughs> that's too much well no i don't know i a lot of people like give me a lot of shit they think i like suck up to her but like i'm just like a fan mm-hmm. like i'm a fan of like giving people their like flowers while they're like here to receive them mm-hmm. like i'm never above like letting somebody know how much i love yeah. them i mean i don't think there's anything wrong with referencing i whenever like that short stint where i was doing reviews for your season some people were coming for me because i said that like i feel like you were referencing a little too much like it felt a little pandery I mean, yeah, like, no, to, to an extent, like, you're on RuPaul's show dressing as RuPaul. Like, it's, it's really, like, people you know, think... It's that, a reference, but it is a little pandering. People but. thought every look that I wore was, like, mm-hmm. like I was wrongfully accused it's of copying... It's RuPaul-inspired. Yeah. Vivian Westwood-inspired. Inspired the boxers. I was wrongfully accused of copying Aquaria on my first runway. The challenge was to recreate a Beyonce outfit. So yeah, that wasn't my idea. It just so happened that RuPaul wore it. And the tea with that look is that I didn't want to choose a Beyonce look that would look a mess if I got it poorly recreated. Mm -hmm. So I chose a look that I could easily get recreated. And then I was like, oh, it just so happens that RuPaul has worn this look, Cher, Tina Turner, someone else I'm blanking on. I was like, oh, it's like a legacy garment. Like stuff like, I love stuff like that. And then, like, wrongly accused of copying Naomi Smalls, where it's like, we just reference the same Mugler thing, and if the challenge is hair, of course I'm going to reference the runway collection where there were several pieces that showcased hair on the mm-hmm. garments. 
Um, and then the RuPaul little shoulder pads look, which was a happy accident because my original look, the designer, 48 hours before I had to get on the plane and leave for Drag Race, um, told me that I couldn't get the look from them. So, oh, nope. damn. Say names. Drag them. No, I'm not going to say names. <laughs> I, I don't remember their name, if I'm going to be honest. Actually, I do. Never mind. Well, with that lack of tea and that very disappointing moment, that is the last of time we officially have today. But oh, where can people find you? You have your music coming up, you have your project, you have any shows, tours or anything. Where, where can people find you? What's happening? You can find me all around the world. You can find me... At your bitch's house? Yeah, you can find me at your bitch's house. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you can find me, like, anywhere, like, hot guys are, like, in, like, the club, at, like, sporting events, at lids. Mm -hmm. Like, you can find me, like, places like that. Um... Nah, I mean. And um, you can find me on Instagram at Luxmore London, L U X X N O I R L O N D O N. You can find me on Twitter there. You can find me on TikTok there. Stream my music. Um, stay tuned for new music coming out soon. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but um, it'll definitely be um, really good. And Maybe. No, it will be really good. Okay. It's anointed. And um, yeah, you can find me all those places and you can also find me here right now click the link to watch the video again <laughs> um, get those streams out yeah and I'm, I'm sure like after this comes by the time this comes out you're gonna have like a million other like little things you're doing because you're out here yeah. doing you're working the social media game thank you yeah but not in like a desperate way like me but like actually just like making appearances on stuff yeah you're not the only one yeah <laughs> 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 anyway so she's gonna have like the entire cast of season 16 on her YouTube channel at some point it's all about the ones who are relevant. Yeah, yeah. So that's that, why I've been less than the dust. She can't make any more money off of TikTok Live off of me anymore. So damn, it's like a leech that one. But you can find me right here. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And join us next time whenever we have Lux again because the audio is gonna crash. <laughs> and uh, yeah, till then, bye guys. Let's go. This is my announcement. Mm -hmm. I'm quitting drag. You're welcome. You're gonna need so many bitches after this. <laughs> it's crazy.